Okay, hi there. Uh, here's a macro video and we're going to be working through the different stages of economic integration between countries. Nations might decide to deepen their economic ties, for example, through membership of a customs union or a single market, or they might decide to, uh, to widen their integration by bringing more countries into an agreement. The issue of integration at a macro level, at an international level, has heightened in recent times, of course, given the UK's vote to leave the European Union. So here are the main types of integration that you need to know about. Uh, there are some interesting examples to look at from both an emerging and developing country perspective. And it raises interesting questions about the extent to which integration between countries can act as a catalyst for increased trade and investment and ultimately stronger growth and development. Uh, the way to think about this is to consider the different layers of integration as we go through the process. So initially, if you just agree a free trade area, and that can take uh, several years to, uh, to come to fruition, a free trade area, of course, is designed to bring down tariff walls, eliminate quotas and subsidies, and try to generate free trade in goods and services between uh, countries in, in an area. So there's just basically no internal trade barriers. Customs Union de develops the integration, deepens the connections, and it adds both free trade, uh, it adds to the system a common external tariff. Tariff is placed around the Customs Union. Single market is a, is a deeper stage of integration. Yes, free trade, common external tariff, but also factor and asset mobility. So free movement of goods, services, people and capital. You might want to go to stage four, which is a monetary union, which involves all of the previous stages, but we add to that a common currency, single exchange rate, and a single central bank in charge of monetary policy. And ultimately, of course, you could get to uh, economic union. Basically, that involves countries agreeing common economic policy. Uh, that might involve having some harmonization of direct and indirect taxes perhaps with much more stringent common uh, labour market and product market rules of, uh, of operation. So as we go from free trade area to economic union, we are deepening our integration uh, between countries. If we bring more countries into each level, then we are enlarging, enlarging or widening the integration. One or two examples of free trade areas, the revised trade agreement between the United States, Mexico and Canada. Very interesting one, the African Continental Free Trade Agreement involving more than 50 African countries. The recently signed EU-Canadian Free Trade Agreement and the likewise one between the European Union and Japan. The United States recently signed a free trade agreement with South Korea. So those are good examples of like, bilateral um, and multilateral free trade agreements. Customs Union comprises countries that agree to abolish tariffs and quotas between member nations, but also to adopt a common external tariff on imports from non-member countries. So the European Union is a customs union. So too is the Southern African Customs Union, SACU, and also the Eurasian Customs Union. Single market, of course, is a deeper stage of integration. The European Union single market is built on four freedoms. Free movement of labour, free trade in goods and free trade in services, but also crucially the free movement of capital from one country to another, be it financial capital, bonds, equities, currencies, as well as foreign direct investment. Uh, the, the EU, of course, is a single market. Uh, so too is ASEAN, who have 10 Southeast Asian countries developing a single market, and also CARICOM, the Caribbean single market and economy. Monetary Union, the next stage of integration, well, of course, the euro is a single currency area with 19 member nations at the moment. Uh, but there are other monetary unions you might want to explore, maybe do a bit of research on this. The West African Monetary Union, uh, which uses the, the, the franc, their own franc as a single currency and the Eastern Carib uh, Caribbean Currency Union has also been developed using one currency uh, within, their, within their trade and economic area. So these are well worth exploring as contextual examples. 
So there we go, a quick look at integration between countries going from free trade all the way through to monetary union.